Welcome to this NPTEL lectures on robotics, basics and advanced concepts. In the last lecture, I had looked at the Lagrangian formulation and shown you that to derive the equation of motion using the Lagrangian formulation, we need to calculate the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and then using a set of derivatives, okay, partial derivatives and time derivatives, we can derive the equations of motion. So in this lecture, we will look at examples of equations of motion. Okay. So this lecture, we will discuss several examples of equations of motion obtained using the Lagrangian formulation. So let's start with a simple example, which is a planar 2R manipulator. Okay. So this is the simplest possible serial manipulator. So it has one rotary joint here, another rotary joint here, and then the rotary joint here has an angle theta 1. This is angle theta 2. There's a torque tau 1, which is acting on the first rotary joint, and a torque tau 2, which is acting on the second rotary joint. Okay. And then we need to define some mass and inertial parameters of these two links. Okay, So for link 1, we are going to use the symbols m1, l1, R1 and I1. So M1 is the mass of link 1, L1 is the length of link 1, R1 is the location of the CG from the origin of the coordinate system. So the origin of the first coordinate system is at the rotary joint axis and R1 is somewhere here. Okay, and I1 is the moment of inertia. Okay, so we are only interested in the Z component of the moment of inertia since this is a planar motion. Okay, so likewise for link 2, we have M2, L2, R2, and I2. So M2 is the mass of the link, second link. L2 is the link, length of the second link. R2 is the location of the CG, again from the origin of the second coordinate system. And I2 is the Z component of the inertia of this link. Okay, we will assume that the gravity is acting in the minus Y direction as shown in this figure. And as I have said earlier, Mi, Li, Ri, and I, I are denote the mass, length, CG location, and the IZZ component of the inertia matrix, respectively, for link 1 and 2. And because this is a planar motion, only the IZZ component is relevant. Okay, so we need to find the velocity of each link. So we are going to use the velocity propagation to find linear and angular velocity. So since the zeroth link is fixed, basically it is a fixed link, the angular velocity and the linear velocity of the origin of the zeroth link is zero. So angular velocity of link zero and the linear velocity of the origin of the zeroth link is zero. Then we can substitute i equals one in the propagation equation. And then right hand side we'll have zero and we will obtain one omega one and one V one. So if you go back and see the propagation equations, we will see that one omega one is zero zero theta one dot column vector transpose. The linear velocity of the origin of the first link is zero and the linear velocity of the center of gravity of the first link will be the linear velocity of the origin plus some omega cross R. Okay, so location of the CG is R1 along the x-axis, so omega is along the z-axis, so we can take the cross product and we'll get R1 theta 1 dot, okay, as the y component. Then for i equals 2, again we can substitute back in the propagation equation for angular velocity, and we will get 2 omega 2 as theta 1 dot plus theta 2 dot transpose along the z-axis the x and y component still remain zero because this is basically a planar motion. The linear velocity of the origin of the second link can be obtained again using the propagation equation. And it turns out that this is some matrix C2, S2, 0, minus S2, C2, 0, 0, 0, 1. So it's a rotation about the z-axis into 0, L1, theta 1 dot 0, okay? So if you carry out this multiplication, we will get L1 S2 theta 1 dot, L1 C2 theta 1 dot 0. Okay, so this makes sense. Why? Right? Because the origin of the second link is at the beginning of the second link. Okay, so only what is happening to the first link, which is theta 1 dot, 
will affect the, the linear velocity. The velocity of the CG now is the origin of the second link plus omega cross R. And R is along the x-axis at a distance R2. R here is the location of the CG. Okay. So we can multiply out and obtain the velocity of the CG. The total kinetic energy is half mv square plus half i omega square for each link. Okay, so we can compute the kinetic energy of link one, which is half m1 r1 theta one dot square plus half i1 theta one dot square. For the second link, it is half i2 theta one dot plus theta two dot square. And we will also have a term which is half mv square, where v is the center of mass of the second link. And it turns out that you will have terms which include theta 1 dot square, theta 2 dot square into some r2 square. But also you will get a term which is 2 l1 r2 c2 theta 1 dot into theta 1 dot plus theta 2 dot. Okay. So what it basically means that the kinetic energy of the second link is a function of theta 2. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. So these are like the Coriolis and centripetal term, which will show up later. So as I said, link 1 is the first two terms, link 2 are the second two terms. The potential energy is nothing but the mg along the y direction, opposite to the gravity. So the location of the CG is R1, S1. So, location, so the potential energy of the first link is M1, G, S1. The location of the CG for the second link is L1, S1 plus L2, S1, 2. You can see in the figure. So the potential energy is M2, G. And since it is opposite to the gravity, remember there was a minus sign earlier. Both the minus signs go away and we're left with one positive quantity. So the zero is the zero of the x0. Okay, the reference is this. So as you can see, this distance is r1 s1, and this distance is l1 uh, s1 plus l2 s12. That is the y component. Okay, so we have obtained the potential energy, the kinetic kinetic energy of both the links. And then we can find the Lagrangian for this planar to our manipulator. Okay, so it is nothing but the kinetic minus the potential energy. Okay, so it will be a function of theta 1, theta 2, and also theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot. Okay. So as given by the Lagrangian formulation, we need to now take partial derivatives of this Lagrangian with respect to theta i i equals 1 and 2. So this Lagrangian with respect to theta 1 will give you minus m1g r1c1 minus m2g l1c1 plus l2c12. Okay. The partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta 2 will also contains minus m2g r2c12, but there will be also a term which includes theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot because the kinetic energy is also a function of theta 2. Okay, so we'll have some C2 was there, so partial derivative will be S2, and we'll get the rest of it remaining the same. Okay, the partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to theta i dot can also be obtained. So del uh, this Lagrangian with respect to theta 1 dot will contains this i1 plus i2 m1 r1 square, m2 l1 square, m2 r2 square, and then 2 m2 l1 r2 c2 into theta 1 dot. And then one more term, which is i2 plus m2 r2 square plus m2 l1 r2 c2 into theta 2 dot. Likewise, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta 2 dot will be given by I2 m2 r2 square and m2 l1 r2 c2 theta 1 dot and I2 plus m2 r2 square theta 2 dot. Okay, remember the kinetic energy contains theta 1 dot square and theta 2 dot square and, that, and it was half. So we now are left with theta 1 dot theta 2 dot. The half has gone away. Okay, 
So it's very straightforward. It is standard taking partial derivatives with respect to theta1 dot and theta2 dot. Nothing new. Then we take the time derivative of this d lambda dl by d theta1 dot. Okay. And then we will get theta1 double dot into some term, theta2 double dot into some term. Okay. So these are the d by dt of d Lagrangian with respect to d theta1 dot. Likewise, d by dt of d Lagrangian with respect to d theta2 dot. Okay partial derivatives will again give you theta 1 dot into some quantity which is m i2 m2 r2 square plus 2 m2 l1 r2 c2 and again one more term with theta 2 dot into this and finally one more term which is product of theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot okay so we can now assemble the expressions which is d by dt of this minus dl by d theta 1 is equal to tau 1 and d by dt of dl by d theta 2 dot minus tau l by tau theta 2 will give you tau 2. So now we have tau 1 equal to this expression, tau 2 is equal to this expression. Okay, so let's quickly just take a brief moment and see what are the terms which contains theta 1 dot. Okay, so now we have theta 1 dot and inside the bracket we have i1, i2, m2 l1 square, m1 r1 square, m2 r2 square. So you can think of this i1 plus m1 r1 square is like the inertia with respect to the origin of the coordinate system. Similarly, i2 plus m2 r2 square is again so inertia with respect to the CG and we want it with respect to the origin of the coordinate system. So this is sort of expected. Okay, we have done some kind of uh, transference of the inertia from the CG to the origin. We will also have terms which are M2 L1 square, but more importantly, we'll have a term which is 2 M2 L1 R2 C2. Okay, so basically what it is telling you is the inertia as seen by the first joint, okay, theta one, okay, depends on what is happening to the second joint. What is the angle, rotation angle at the second joint? Is that correct? Yes, because the second link is rotating with respect to the first link and the first joint will see the inertia due to the second link, okay, and since it is rotating, it will be different at different instant. So intuitively, if the second link is completely stretched out, then the first joint will see a much larger inertia than if it is completely folded in. Okay. So the second joint theta two double dot is also multiplied by I two M two R two square plus M two L one R two C two. So again, the inertia seen by the second joint has some terms which contains theta two. And then we have these two additional terms uh, which are 2 theta 1 dot theta 2 dot and theta 2 dot square. So this is like centripetal term and this is like the Coriolis term. Okay, so we know that if you have a rigid body which is moving and then the coordinate system is also moving, we have this Coriolis and centripetal terms and these are those terms. And finally, we have a term which is M2G into L1C1 minus R2C12 and M1G R1 C1. So these are the terms which correspond to correspond to the torque due to the gravity. So the gravity is acting at the CG, so the joint will see some torque. Okay. We can also see that tau 2 will be related to I2, M2 R2 square, and M2 L1 R2 C2. So the first theta 1 double dot into some inertia will come and theta 2 double dot will be just I2 plus M2 R2 square. Okay, and again, we have a Coriolis a centripetal term, theta 1 dot square and M2 R2 G C12. Okay. So both of these two equations are nonlinear ODEs. Okay, why? Because they have sine theta 2, cos theta 2 and so on. And also theta 1 dot square and theta 1 dot theta 2 dot. So in a standard form, we can write it as some vector tau 1, tau 2, 
into some matrix times theta1 double dot theta2 double dot plus the Coriolis term, centripetal term, and plus the gravity term. Remember, I had discussed that for any serial robot, we can have tau is m theta double dot plus c theta theta dot plus g theta. That is the standard form. Here also, we can show that we can write it in the standard form. Okay, so the matrix inside the square bracket is the two by two mass matrix. Okay, the two by one vector here contains theta one dot square, theta two dot square, and theta one dot theta two dot terms. Okay, so they are the centripetal and Coriolis term. And the last two by one vector is the gravity term. Okay, so remember, when we had discussed Lagrangian formulation, there is no friction or dissipative terms in the equations of motion at this stage because the Lagrangian is for conservative system. Okay, so tau is m into theta double dot plus c theta theta dot plus g theta. Okay, so this m is sort of like an inertia matrix. So if you think about it, if you have a single rigid body, tau will be i theta double dot. So this is like a generalization of the inertia matrix. This is a generalization of the Coriolis centripetal term, and this is the gravity term for this 2R manipulator. Let's look at one more example, which is the planar four bar mechanism. Okay, so this is also one of the simplest possible one degree of freedom closed loop mechanism. You can't find anything simpler than this. So this has three moving links, link one, link two, link three. There is only one actuated joint because the four bar mechanism has one degree of freedom. So theta one is actuated. Okay, and then phi two, phi three, and phi one are passive. Okay, so corresponding to this theta one, we have a torque which is acting at this joint. Okay, so now we need to introduce some geometry and inertial parameters of this link. So just like the 2R, we will assume that the link one is M1, L1, R1, and I1. Okay, so M is the mass, L is the length of this link, R is the location of the CG, and I is the Z component of the inertia of this link. Okay, similarly, link two, we have M2, L2, R2, and I2, and link three is M3, L3, R3, and I3. Okay, so the gravity is acting in the Y direction. Okay, and as in the planar 2R example, only the IZZ component of the inertia matrix of each link is relevant. So we can now break the four bar mechanism at O3. Okay, we can break it here. So we have a planar 2R and a planar 1R robot. Okay, so it is the same formula as what we derived for planar 2R, except now theta 2 is replaced by phi 2. Okay, the kinetic energy of the 1R is nothing but 1 by 3 m r3 square into phi 1 dot square. Okay, and half I3 phi 1 dot. So the rotation of the last output link, third link, is given by phi 1. The rate of rotation is phi 1 dot. Okay, so the total kinetic energy is nothing but the kinetic energy of the first link, which is what we have derived earlier, kinetic energy of the second link, these two terms, and the kinetic energy of the third link. Okay, this is the third term for the 1R robot. So the total potential energy is also the potential energy of the planar 2R, which was derived. One term is first link, this is the second link, and this is the third link, M3GR3 sine phi 1. It is very straightforward. Okay, the distance from the x-axis is sine of some angle, R3 into sine of some angle. The Lagrangian for the planar 2R and planar 1R mechanism, okay, can be obtained as kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So again, kinetic energy has all the three kinetic energies and potential energy has all the three potential energies. 
We also have a constraint for the fourth bar. When we break up at the third joint, so the vector from the left origin to the third joint, the x component is L1 C1 plus L2 cos theta 1 plus phi 2. And we can reach from the other direction, which is L0 plus L3 cos phi 1. Okay, we have discussed this earlier uh, in lectures also when we discussed kinematics of parallel robots. The y component is L1 sine theta 1 plus L2 sine theta 1 plus phi 2 is L3 sine phi 1. Okay, there is nothing new. We have discussed this earlier. So we reach that third joint in two ways. So we can perform the partial derivatives with respect to Q1, Q dot, okay, just to obtain the equations of motion. So what is Q here? Q is theta 1, phi 2, okay, phi 1, phi 3 does not show up because we have broken up at the third joint. Okay, so we will get a 3 by 3 mass matrix after we take all the partial derivatives and organize into ma m into q double dot plus c q q dot plus g q is equal to torque. So the mass matrix will have m11 will have i2 m2 r1 square plus i1 m2 l1 square plus 2 m2 l1 r2 cos phi 2 plus m1 r1 square. So if you see this is exactly the same as m11 which we obtain for the planar 2r. M12 is I2 M2 R2 square, okay, plus M2 L1 R2 cos phi 2, and this term will be zero, okay. Likewise, M21 and M22 are given by this, and M23 will be zero, okay, because it's kinetic energy, okay, you can show that it will be zero, and the third row of the mass matrix will be 0, 0, M3, R3 square plus I3. Okay, we can also find the Coriolis and centripetal terms, C, Q, Q dot. This matrix will be minus M2, L1, R2, sine phi 2, phi 2 dot. Okay, the second term will be minus L2, L1, R2, sine phi 2, theta 1 dot, minus M2, L1, R2, sine phi 2, phi 2 dot, and this last column will be 0, the last row will be 0, and similarly we can find the second term, 2, 1 term, which is M2, L1, R2, sin phi 2, theta 1 dot. Finally, we can also compute the gravity vector, which is 3 by 1 vector. So it will contain M1, G, M1 cos theta 1, some M2, G, L1 cos theta 1 plus R2, theta 1 plus phi 2, and so on. So it is exactly very similar to the planar one. We have a third component of the gravity vector, which is coming from the planar 1R. Likewise, there will be a third row and a third column in the mass matrix. And likewise, there will be a third row and a third column in the Coriolis and centripetal term. Okay, so we can rewrite the equations of motion as tau 1, which is equal to some matrix, okay, which is functions of g, then theta 1 double dot, then the phi 2 double dot, and then this Coriolis and centripetal term. Okay, so tau 2 can be written as the gravity term, the mass inertia term, which is my m times theta double dot, and then the Coriolis centripetal term. And tau 3 can also be written in m3 g r3 cos phi 1, plus m3 r3 square plus i3 into phi 1 double dot. This is very straightforward because it's a single one link robot. So these are three nonlinear ordinary differential equations. Okay, however, at this point, the constraint equations have not yet been taken into account. Okay, so the reason that is the reason why this third equation does not contain the theta 1 and phi 2. Okay, it looks like the third equation is completely independent. But we know that in a four-bar mechanism, the, all those angles are related to theta 1. Okay, they are coupled. So we can obtain the constraint matrix, which is, remember, it is K and K star coupled and concatenated. So I had derived for the four-bar mechanism what is K and K star. If you go back and see, k is this, k star is this. 
okay so we put side by side and we get a 2 by 3 constraint matrix psi of q we can take the derivative of this constraint equation and we'll get psi of q into q double dot plus psi dot q into q dot okay so this is the derivative of the loop closure constraint equations we organized as psi into q dot is equal to 0 So to obtain q double dot from the equation of motion, we can write q double dot is m inverse tau minus c q dot minus g plus m inverse psi transpose lambda. Exactly the same what we have discussed when I derived the Lagrangian formulation with constraint. So we can substitute q double dot in the derivative of the constraint equation here, okay, and solve for lambda, and then substitute back lambda. to obtain the equation of motion for the planar four bar which is m q double dot is equal to f minus psi transpose this complicated expression of psi and m inverse and so on and then another term which is psi m inverse f plus psi dot q dot so psi here represents the constraint matrix 2 by 3 constraint matrix and f is the tau minus c q dot minus g and what is q here Q is the configuration space, which is theta one, phi two, and phi one. Phi three does not show up because we have broken the joint at third joint. Okay. So one last thing before we end here. Remember, I had said in a four-bar mechanism we will have only one actuation, which is tau one. So what happens to these equations of motion? basically tau 2 and tau 3 will be zero so we have one equation which is tau 1 which is the given input torque and this will be zero is equal to this and tau 3 will be zero is equal to this so these are three differential equations okay and after eliminating lambda the lagrange multiplier we will have three coupled differential equations which are of the form m q double dot is this and in this f Only tau one is non-zero. Tau two and tau three are zero. So, in summary, the equation of motion can be obtained using the Lagrangian formulation. Okay. So, this is very mechanical. You find the kinetic energy, you find the potential energy, you subtract Ke minus Pe, and then you take this set of derivatives, some partial derivatives and some time derivatives. Okay. <laughs> so we can obtain error free equations of motion using symbolic computer algebra system such as maple so i don't have to do these partial derivatives by hand okay so i showed you that the equation of motion of a planar 2r serial manipulator can be easily obtained the equation of motion of a planar 4 bar mechanism closed loop mechanism can also be obtained of course if you want spatial and multi degree of freedom serial or parallel manipulator example it will take a lot of time okay but the basic ideas are there in these two examples which i have chosen so in the next lecture we will look at what to do with these equations of motion so we will look at something called the inverse dynamics and something called the simulations of equations of motion